conference will now be recorded. Uh, good evening. We opened the Harvest Board of Selectmen's meeting for February 1, 2021 at 5.45 this evening and then went into open into executive session with the intent upon leaving that of returning back to the open session. We discussed two articles. The first was pursuant to MGL uh, 30A to consider purchase, exchange, or lease of value of real property if the chair so declares. And the second item we discussed was strategy relating to pending litigation known as Watkins et al. versus the town of Harwich. We discussed both those issues. They're ongoing and we'll have uh, further discussions. With that, we return now to uh, uh, open meeting at approximately 632, uh, I guess. And so at this point, I'd ask, invite you to uh, join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. And thank you, Joe, we have the flag in front of us. I pledge allegiance to the flag, to the flag. of the United States United of America, States. to the, the Republic, Republic for which it stands, one nation, nation, nation under God, nation, indivisible, nation, liberty, liberty, and justice for all. for all. Thank you. Next on the agenda is weekly briefing, and as usual, uh, hello, Megan. We'll, I'll go to Joel to introduce it, and then we'll, I'm sure we'll move to you, Megan. Uh, Mr. Chairman, straight from you to our uh, public health director for her update. Good evening, Larry and other board members. Uh, I have some good news. We have a, a lesser active caseload than we have in the last several weeks. Um, right now we have 27 active cases in the town of Harwich. That's gone down from the low to mid thirties over the last several weeks. So we are heading in the right direction. We have a total of 481 cases of COVID-19 since the beginning of the pandemic, almost a year ago now. Um, we are still in the red. We are still a high risk community. Um, our positivity rate is at 6.22, is lower than last week. We were in, I believe it was 7.5 last week. So we are again trending in the right direction and and that goes for the entire Commonwealth as a whole. We're trending in the right direction and we, we hope we continue those positive trends. And if all goes well this week, I believe we will be right on track for reopening into phase three of step one of the reopening plans. So uh, as of Monday the 8th, as long as nothing major happens, I believe the governor will roll back his temporary measures in addition to the, the other measures that are already in place, which means in general, those 25% occupancy restrictions should be lifted on Monday. And that goes through a whole lot of types of businesses, offices, restaurants, gyms, um, entertainment venues like movie theaters and things like that. So hopefully a week from today, we'll be back at a 50% capacity rather than a 25% capacity. And that will hope, hopefully assist some of the businesses that are struggling right now and get our, our, our workers back into offices better currently um, working from home. Um, Outside of that, I just wanted to give you a, a vaccine update. Um, Barnstable County is really the vaccine depot for all local boards of health on Cape Cod. They represent 15 towns. Um, the town of Sandwich is its own provider. Uh, they have, um, I'm not sure why they ended up being their own provider, but Barnstable County represents all the other towns. And as I mentioned last week with the restrictions and the allocations that the Department of Public Health is putting on vaccine distribution, each provider is only getting a certain amount of COVID-19 vaccine. The, town, the county as our provider is getting Pfizer vaccine, which is the, the frozen vaccine that needs the deep freeze 
uh, equipment in order to store it, they're able to, to secure 975 doses per week. And those will be going to regional clinics that they will set up on a weekly basis. They have a few sites um, that they will operate out of and they're trying to rotate throughout the Cape so they're able to get different areas of the Cape. They have the fairgrounds, the Melody Tent, and they're working on securing one in the Outer Cape, Lower Cape, Outer Cape area, possibly Orleans or East Ham. They, last week they divided the 975 up into two different clinics so they could serve two different clinic locations. The tough part about the vaccine is once you take it out of the freezer and defrost it, it only has a, a few hours to, to really work with it. Um, so once you, once you get it out of the freezer, you've got to have the, the appointments lined up and you can't, once you puncture a vial, you can't put it back in the fridge. You've got you've to use all that you open. So it's a pretty intense process for both the Moderna and the Pfizer vaccines. And we learned, um, I learned today that it's not transportable. Once, once it's delivered, it's delivered frozen, both types, it needs to stay frozen until you're ready to use it. Um, and it can't be transported once it's not in a frozen state. It's such a delicate mixture. It's a, it's a delicate vaccine. So doing mobile clinics or um, having a nurse go to do homebound or home visits with the vaccine right now is not possible because you can't, you can't shake this vaccine, you can't disturb it. It needs to be very stable. So they don't recommend traveling with it once it's in a liquid state. So that does change some of our hopes for doing homebound residents. Um, at this point, it's not a possibility. They're, they're looking possibly the, the Johnson & Johnson vaccine might be a possibility for, for doing something else that you can open a vial and, and, and move from house to house with it. Um, <clears throat> with that said, the 975 a week on the Cape doesn't go very far. We have hundreds of thousands of residents all itching for the vaccine and, and we understand that. We have other options that are also very slim on the Cape. We have CVS, Walgreens, and stop and shop that are also providers. And if you go through the mass.gov website for the vaccine map, you can click on those locations and attempt to get an appointment. And if you're, if you're lucky, lucky that day, you can secure an appointment. I've been on a few times just to see what the process is like. And it's, it's very simple. Um, it's like signing up for uh, a newsletter at first. You just put your name and address in and it searches for 50 miles around you for a vaccine. Um, and if there's one, it shows you the, the date and time of, of it and, and you can book it for an appointment. Lately I've been on and there's just, there's no vaccine within 50 miles of Harwich. There is vaccine available off Cape and Cape Cod residents, any residents within Massachusetts are able to go to, there's three mass vaccination sites. You don't have to be a resident of the town that that, re, that clinic is in, uh, the one at Gillette, and then there's one at Fenway, and there's one out, right outside of Boston. So if you are desperate for a vaccine right now, you are able to travel for it. Um, I just want to remind people that being vaccinated doesn't make you able to not social distance or not wear a mask. Um, it doesn't give you the green light to go visit family that you haven't seen in six months, nine months. Um, it's a step towards that, but it's not, it's not a, 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 a free for all once you've been vaccinated. So if we can wait another month, we believe we'll be able to get more than that 975 doses per week. And we'll be able to have larger clinics 
that um, people will have to get out of their houses to get to. And that's really unfortunate for, for some of our, our vulnerable populations. Um, the state is working on a solution for that. Um, phase two of the vaccine distribution plan started today. So all of the people in phase one are eligible and they remain eligible forever. Um, and then phase two starts today, phase two group one, and that is people who are 75 years or older. We'll, we'll be in this group for a, at least a week, probably two to three weeks before we open it up to the next group in phase two, which includes um, people that are 65 or older or anyone that has two or more comorbidities. So we're moving along. It's very frustrating. Um, the town of Harwich does not have a wait list. The county does not have a wait list. That's been a, a popular question on the, on the voicemail is how do I get on a wait list? The short answer is there is not a wait list. But if you are lucky enough to get on the vaccine map and find a public clinic, if you get your name in there and then while you're registering, it fills up during that two minute time, which it, it, it does right now, your information is stored. And should someone cancel, they'll call you and you, you'll need to give them a phone number and email. So there is this somewhat wait list, but it's not, it's not an actual wait list. It's, you're put on a list if, um, for some reason someone cancels or they aren't actually qualifying for that group. So say someone age 65 signs up for a clinic next week and as the, the coordinator of the clinic goes through the list, they, re, they see that they're not 75 and they reach out to them and they, they're not in phase one either, that person will get kicked off the list and it will open up a spot. And, the computer system sees that someone had been trying to get a, a, a spot for that day. It, it's not an actual wait list and I'm not 100% sure on how it works, but sometimes you're able to be on a standby for that particular day. Um, I think that's it for vaccine. We are working on a upgrade to the town of Harwich web, uh, website, um, the COVID-19 resource page was just kind of a data dump. All, all of the data got put on that page and it never really got cleaned up. <clears throat> so we're starting a new one and it's got a button on the home page and we're populating it this week. Um, hopefully, hopefully making it easier to find what you're looking for with a list on the left side. So if you're just looking for testing sites, you can click on a link and so forth. Um, the the resource page that Channel 18 helped us with was just really um, a list of all the documents that we've put out. So I'm I'm hoping that'll get populated and be an easy resource for people to find. And I'm happy to take questions. Uh, Megan, uh, just one. The uh, I assume that the uh, pharmacy uh, distribution is a is not included in the 975, they have their own uh, distribution number? That's right. Um, pharmacies are, they don't get their vaccine from the Department of Public Health, they get it straight from the CDC. So they're, they get a different allotment and it's not part of the 975. Um, they seem to be having the same shortage problems that the local, uh, the public clinics are. So yeah. if you if you can find one at a stop and shop or CVS, great, <laughs> great. Try, get one wherever you can, but um, they they're not part of the 975. Yeah, I looked this afternoon. The same response. Nothing within 50 miles. So. Yeah. There you go. Other questions, comments? I do appreciate you cleaning up the uh, data site because it's, it was becoming the, like the old expression: you can't. Dazzle with brilliance, brilliance, you know the rest of that. Yeah, it was, it was, so it was tough to find on. stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Joe, I'll turn it back to you. Do I see Cindy's on? 
Up so I'll use the segue of another, uh, for another um, brilliant presentation. Rather than baffling, we've got our uh, Executive Director of Chamber of Commerce to follow up on the good news that uh, Megan's offering on uh, our numbers. So uh, hopefully, Cindy, you get at least positive or neutral news from the business community. So tonight, actually, since everything's really status quo, I thought I would share um, some information about the annual Harwich Magazine. Um, because that actually does um, reflect all of the town, our businesses, and uh, this year it'll be a little bit different. The uh, theme of it is Harwich Life, Live, Work, Play, and Grow. And we're going to take everyone on a journey. Um, you know, everyone's been through so much this past year, but we didn't want it to scream pandemic. But a lot of things have changed, um, how things, how people live, how they got here, and all that kind of fun stuff. So it'll be um, exciting. Um, we're super excited about it. It is a little different um, than what we've done in the past. And I am going to share the cover. Um, it's not going to be a great, it's not going to do it as justice, but we'll do a unveiling on social media. This was taken um, by a resident in Harwichport. She was following us on social media and I just loved her photography. So um, reached out and um, the board voted and you really can't see this but this actually um for any of you that can tell um this is the campground which we've never really shared um with everybody it's usually had water and all that kind of stuff so this year it's a little different and it's really going to um embody the life and what it's like to live here in this uh wonderful town so that'll be um that was something exciting to share also, uh, we're partnering um, this year, each chamber does their own guidebook or whatever, but the Cape Cod Chamber usually has had one. This year, they've changed and they're doing a uh, digital magazine and there'll be video spotlights. So the chamber, um, the Harwich Chamber has jumped on board because we really wanted to spotlight all that we offer here in town. So um, what this will do is um, it will reach 1.7 million unique vis website viewers, 85,000 Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and Twitter followers, as well as 38,000 email subscribers. So the world is going to know Harwich mm -hmm. and all we offer. So there's some more exciting news. Um, and then um, we've uh, signed on, you know, we get so many leads um, through the town, through the state on grants, but we've also um, joined on uh, group that's called Grant Watch. And now I search under every rock possible that we can help um, any of the sectors that truly need um, the help through grants. So uh, that'll be more um, as we find something I will, of course, present to all of you so you can hear. Um, but just continue to support um, our restaurants and uh, shops and all the local small businesses. Uh, we had a board meeting last week and many of them were telling us how well they are doing. So um, it's great to hear the good news. Um, I can't wait for February 8th because I'm, fingers crossed, 50% um, will be great. Um, and hopefully we'll get to see some of our restaurants come back on board as well. Other than that, that's my good news for tonight. Thank you, Cindy. Comments for Cindy, questions? Thanks again, Cindy and Megan. Uh, all right, uh, next is uh, uh, public comments. I, is anyone uh, wish to say, we, we have no one in queue for that, I think. Uh, Correct, no one in queue for the public comments uh, for later topics perhaps, but not for that. Okay. Next is the annual committee presentations. We have housing, uh, Howard's Housing Authority and uh, Art, I, I see your name up here. So Mr. Chairman of the three committees, we received, I believe, material in your packet for the housing committee uh, for which yeah, I okay. can speak to. All right. I guess I'm on then. <laughs> I, I was oh. looking at the, I was looking at the agenda and I was number two, but I'll go first. That's okay. No problem there. Uh, good evening, uh, Mr. Chairman and, and members of the board. Uh, Art Bowden um, presenting the uh, uh, Harwich Housing Committee annual report for 2020. During the past year, the Housing Committee has focused on its mission 
to be an advocate for housing. We have supported a representative to the Community Preservation Committee by for funding, uh, supporting funding for affordable housing initiatives and a rental assistance program administered by the Harwich Housing Authority. When called upon, the Housing Committee has offered voice and written comments supporting affordable housing projects. Earlier in the year, the committee participated in a joint meeting with the Affordable Housing Trust Committee to form a partnership for a more singular approach to solving how housing issues. Additionally, the chair supports the Affordable Housing Trust by attending meetings and adding input on agenda items and recommendations of direction that the Affordable Housing Trust should be pursuing. The committee is committed to being a partner with the housing, the Affordable Housing Trust. Continuing. The Housing Committee visited other towns this, uh, this past year to witness firsthand the process that what other towns are achieving in building affordable housing. One of these projects is a recently furnished project in Hyannis sponsored by the Housing Assistance Corporation. It's called the Ridge Road Apartment Complex. It consisted of 16 one and two bedroom apartments. And it illustrated uh, what a project it demonstrated what can be done on a small parcel of land and with a design that complemented the area. The committee has maintained its representation on the County Home Consortium Advisory Council, participating in their monthly meetings and playing a role in determining the allocation of housing funds that the Housing Home Program administers. The committee also supports the Real Estate and Open Space Committee by attending their meetings and advocating for housing. The Real Estate and Open Space Committee plays a pivotal role in the determination of the use of land that becomes available to the town. Therefore, it is essential to have housing in the room when the determination for land use is being discussed. During 2020, Habitat for Humanity started work on six homes on Murray Lane in West Harwich. We are thankful that Habitat is back in Harwich building owner-occupied homes. It is important that we support this great organization now and in the future. In closing, I want to thank the town administrator, Joe Powers, and the Board of Selectmen for their support of housing initiatives, and the town planner, Charlene Greenhall, for her support and all requests made to her. Respectfully, Arthur Bowden, Chair, Housing Committee. Thank you. Have any questions? Thank you, uh, questions, comments? Gentlemen? Uh, Don? Yeah, thanks. Uh, Art and I are, are in uh, pretty frequent contact with each other, have been over the past mm -hmm. year. Um, we can look forward in the next few weeks to having another joint meeting, uh, Art, uh, between the trust and uh, the housing committee. And I want to assure people, uh, even then when they're not seeing what's going on, that I've had conversations uh, with the CDP uh, relative to Andrea and Polinda being made available on time. Uh, we're not utilizing them to the fullest. And the role of the housing committee is somewhat different from the uh, affordable housing trust. I really am relying on them, especially when COVID is uh, over, to the more the outreach uh, in terms of uh, discussing why affordable housing is important. I know we on the board have discussed this, and I know you and I have, Art, uh, that yeah. it's not the trust itself can transcend affordable with a capital A in some projects where it can build low end market rate housing in conjunction with affordable housing, as long as it meets the other guidelines. So uh, I know I know we've had discussions like that and, I, and I'd like to be able to make sure that we continue to, uh, with you folks doing the community outreach and the trust uh, building on properties. So, we, so far the, the only project I can discuss publicly is the one uh, in uh, on Sisson Road, but uh, you've been there for pretty much every discussion we've had, and that's moving along. Good. Uh, Don and Art, uh, it, does outreach mean that uh, if I call wanting not, not only about buying housing, but uh, I'm in trouble, I need rental assistance, uh, guidance or direction on who to contact, that type of outreach as well? Um, I'm, 
I would have to refer that to the housing authority. And uh, if there's, uh, you know, a rental assistance questions, uh, they're the ones that uh, generally uh, field those questions. Larry, um, or, or just help on what might be available, you know, sort of. Andrea is probably more helpful with that if, because they do have a contact uh, mechanism through Facebook and through the uh, town's website. And frankly, while we don't ourselves do that, uh, HAC is uh, the conduit for the state's uh, contract award for the uh, community development block grant uh, that was given to Cape Cod through the commission. Um, they are doing rental assistance. Uh, HESH does some rental assistance. CDP does. Lower Cape Outreach Council does. But if people are, yes, <laughs> I think. Uh, if people are in need, we, especially now, we certainly don't want them falling through the cracks, but we're trying to focus. Uh, I don't think Art's been doing any, uh, anything uh, in referrals and the trust itself is focusing on no, no. Actually, actually building properties where people can walk in and have a ceiling over their head. Uh, so recognizing there are other aspects of housing uh, problems, uh, Andrea could direct them to people that are actively engaged in that. Yeah, they pursue that a bit because I think your last comment was what I was looking for. Was there someone in town, a person could call and and that per and the town official would, whether it's to Linda possibly direct them to the right person to talk to. So they're just now floundering about how to get information. They can, and again, it's on the website. The, the, the bigger issue is in the longer term, I'd love to have it inside town hall. I think we've all discussed that tangentially, and that's probably the, the destination point uh, so that there's really an anchor so that people can know that there's somebody in town hall, but it doesn't help when town hall's not open and we're under contract uh, for that kind of assistance uh, to the trust. Ultimately, the real solution is that there's somebody tasked with that in town hall. Okay, hmm. other questions, comments? Mm -hmm. Right, no, nobody? Not, well, if not, thank you, Art. Well, thank you. Thank you. So, Mr. Chairman, this allows me to apologize for uh, my mistake for Tracy. Uh, Tracy, I apologize, I didn't see you there. Um, so we also have Tracy Cannon uh, to present on behalf of the Housing Authority. Thank you. Hi. Hi, nice to meet you all. I'm, I'm the new director at the um, Chatham Housing Authority. And I just wanted to follow up on what was being said um, about the housing, uh, the rental assistance. We, of course, have the rental assistance that we were given uh, by the town so that we have that. Um, I'm happy to field any calls from anybody at any time. Um, I, you know, we, a lot of people call us anyway because we have the name authority in our title. So um, they do believe that we know, you know, where they should go and what they could do if they needed help. Um, currently we do have the help in, in that we have um, the rental assistance, which my uh, colleague is currently going through our applications um, and uh, processing all of them and uh, <clears throat> trying to get some people uh, help as quick as possible. And then I also uh, very often, Andrea has a great contact. I also send people up to homeless prevention because they're, they're a, very good, a very good resource for um, people in need of either assistance and or housing in general. Um, they're, they're just a really good, they're all, we have a lot of good resources, I have to say. So, um, that being said, I have to apologize, um, because I realized as I was, uh, leaving my office today that I had an annual report of the Harwich Housing Authority to, re to give to you guys. And I, I probably should have, I was supposed to mail, I was supposed to email it to all of you. So I'm happy to read it to you if that's okay. Um, and, uh, and then if you have any questions regarding it, um, I mean, it is technically from our board, um, unless Elizabeth, you don't want to read it, do you? Do you care? You don't care? No, she does not care. <laughs> okay, so I will, <laughs> is it okay? If I it's okay, you I'll... <laughs> then, yeah, I think you can read it and then email to us. We'll clearly, I happily do that. I'm so sorry, I realized as I was leaving the office today, I went, oh no, I was supposed to send it, so. Um, to the Honorable Board of Selectmen and the citizens of the Town of Harwich. The office of the Harwich Housing Authority shares space with the Chatham Housing Authority and is located at 240 Kroll Road in Chatham. The office is open <clears throat> five days a week, 
8 a.m. to 4 p.m. except for Fridays when we close at 3.30. Our physical office is currently closed to the general public for in-person appointments due to COVID-19. We will schedule appointments with our tenants when necessary. Our board consists of five members. We currently have one vacancy. The mission of the Harwich Housing Authority is to provide affordable, decent, safe, and sanitary housing through the maintenance of our existing units and the development of new units to create an environment which enables residents to live responsibly and with dignity, to support residents in their effort to achieve self-sufficiency, to honor public commitments in a fiscally and ethically responsible manner, to create and maintain public confidence in the authority's operations and staff, to ensure that the facilities owned and managed by the Howard Housing Authority are marketable to the community and are appealing to residents to enable the Harwich Housing Authority staff to improve their performance through appropriate vision, training, and career development, and to establish performance goals that meet or exceed industry standards, and that optimize the use of available resources to achieve our performance objectives, and to assist the town, state, and national governments in identifying and addressing housing needs. Eligibility for housing subsidized through the Harwich Housing Authority is governed by rules and regulations promulgated by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts Department of Housing and Community Development and the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development. The Harwich Housing Authority operates a total of 41 units of state subsidized housing under three different government subsidy programs. State programs include the Massachusetts Rental Voucher Program, which currently has 21 scattered site family and elderly vouchers. These voucher amounts are based on income and pay for any portion of rent that exceeds 30 to 40% of household income. The state has revamped the program, opening it up to a wider income base for eligibility. Other programs include the Massachusetts 705 Family Housing Program, which consists of 12 family units, <clears throat> two two-bedroom units, and 10 three-bedroom units, one which is wheelchair accessible. The rent for these apartments is based on 27% of household income after deductions. And finally, we have the Massachusetts 167 program through the Department of Mental Health, which has a total of eight special needs units in a single building, which is currently leased to VinFen. The projects being funded with Community Preservation Act funds approved by Harwich Town Meetings consist of the Rental Assistance Program, which is still going strong. We requested $150,000 in additional funds from the CPC to continue the program and have just received $200,000. CADA has begun the process of updating our waiting list and preparing to accept our newest group of recipients. With these funds, we'll be able to assist a minimum of 18 households. We have assisted over 100 households since the program started. Under this program, we offer assistance to qualified families to, by paying a portion of their rent each month, not to exceed $350 for a maximum of three years. We recertify re them once a year and adjust their voucher accordingly. This program is designed to help people as they work towards becoming self-sufficient. We continue to contract with the Chatham Housing Authority for management of the HHA. Tracy Cannon and Kata Kaler Rice handle the daily activities of the Harwich Housing Authority. Dave Trossi is our maintenance mechanic and works a part-time schedule with the Harwich Housing Authority. We thank them for their service. The Harwich Housing Authority wishes to express its gratitude and thanks to the town and citizens of Harwich for a successful 2020 and looks forward to a productive 2021. We welcome and encourage your support and suggestions in our efforts to continue to provide quality housing for residents of Harwich. Respectfully submitted the board. So that's, you, our, uh, that's our annual blurb. Um, primarily right now, what's going on, um, the big, you know, I mean, the most uh, important thing right now is, of course, they are uh, getting the um, housing assistance out. That is what we're working on um, with most right now. We have our 12 units are full. Um, we rarely get vacancies. The families are very happy where they are. And uh, and they all seem to be doing well. We did just, just begin doing a... Um, kind of a, uh, I don't know, if, we're trying to neaten up um, some of the properties. So I've, uh, I um, allocated some funds to get landscapers over to Long Pond to get get things cleaned up a little bit over there. And 
Um, but all in all, I think they're in pretty good shape. The properties seem to be in in uh, in pretty good shape. So and the and our group home is going strong. So that's the report. Questions or comments for Tracy? Uh, Don. Yeah, I just want to take note of Elizabeth uh, Harder sitting over there in uh, one of the Hollywood squares. Uh, <laughs> I know she's too shy and self-effacing to talk about anything, but she's been uh, unusually uh, quiet. In deference to art, I, I, I don't know that there's a more ardent and passionate uh, advocate for affordable housing, Elizabeth. I'm I'm just here to support Miss Tracy tonight. Um, <laughs> but yes, you know, housing, more housing. We need more housing, please. Thank you. <laughs> I believe I've heard that before from you. Okay. Thanks again, Tracy. Oh, That's you're welcome, Larry. We'll, we'll move on. Uh, Mr. Uh, Chairman, I'm not sure there's, there's any uh, from 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 this, this Yeah, I'm not sure. We, we didn't get a report, um, so we can follow up on, uh, on that and have them come back. Okay, let's move on then to public hearings and we have a presentation on the possible uh, reuse of uh, Bank Street Fire Station. So thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. In a moment, uh, you'll hear from uh, Jeff Locantori. Uh, Jeff and John O'Callaghan have been meeting with me, uh, well, virtually, of course, but uh, regularly. Uh, they have a uh, proposal uh, that Jeff would like to present this evening regarding the reuse uh, of the property at 203 Bank Street. And so uh, with that, Mr. Chairman, I would just uh, turn it over to Mr. Logan Torrey for his presentation. Is he on the, uh, on our call? Uh, so Jeff, if you're on, you have to unmute either star six or uh, hit the uh, space bar or the microphone icon. Can everybody hear me? We can, yes. yes. Good evening, members of the board and Jill Powers. Thank you for inviting me tonight to talk about um, the reuse of 203 Bank Street, the former original fire station and Harbor Masters building. Um, my friend Jonathan O'Callaghan and I have, are in the process actually of forming a 501c3 with a local lawyering firm. Um, it would be called Adult Shared Living Harwich Incorporated. And the mission statement of that is to obtain housing for adults 22 years and older with disability with disabled in any way to live independently who would not be able to afford a place of their own on Cape Cod. They also would like to live in a shared house with adults their own age and share the same or similar interests. And um, I'm gonna just give you a brief update on myself and Jonathan, as Jonathan was, is working tonight, so he's not able to be on the call. Um, I'm 35 years old with CP and two different types of seizure disorders. Um, I lived in Harwich since 1990, and I know a few board of selectmen, uh, Mike McCaskill, um, Don Howell. Um, I graduated from Cape Cod Tech in 2004 with a diploma and a business certificate from the business management program. Um, I was on the honor society in high school in my junior and senior year. And since uh, graduation in 2004, I have volunteered in town in many departments. Um, you can ask Courage Fire Department, I've done their photograph. I've worked with uh, the retired Barbara, uh, COA director, Barbara Ann Foley. Um, I've, I've helped Susan Giselle when she's needed things done. Um, 
I've helped all different departments. Um, and I want to be able to do some uh, affordable housing for disabled adults in town. Um, Jonathan Callahan, my the other co-founder is a 36 year old uh, with cognitive and physical disabilities. He moved to Harwich permanently in 2017, but summered here with his parents and grandparents since a young child. Jonathan is a 2000 graduate, 2003 graduate from Whitman Hanson High School, Regional High School with a high school diploma. Jonathan works for Windsor Skilled Care Nursing and Rehab in South Yarmouth as a dietary aide and in the summer for Cranberry Valley Golf Course in Harwich. Jonathan likes to golf, kayak, garden, and work on nonprofit projects such as housing for disabled and the Cranberry Festival Committee as a volunteer to help with the community of Harwich. We are hoping you consider allowing adult shared living Harwich the ability to use the old fire station property as a place to put a prefab house with a total of four bedrooms and possibly four and a half bathrooms. And um, this project would be completed in phases. Um, you know, we are, we're looking for support from the Board of Selectmen. Um, I also have a small committee put together. I've got a treasurer, a secretary, two to three board members. I've got a photographer. I've got a advertising person. Um, and that advertising person, once we are established as a nonprofit, can get me press time with Cape Cod Times. And I have a connection with Cape Cod Chronicle. So we'll be able to get in there. Um, my reason for doing this is I like to be in with, adult, with adults my own age. I live at Pine Oaks Village in Harwich as of right now. And the reason I want to do this is so I'm in with adults. Um, I've worked diligently with Joe by phone because of COVID, of course. And Joe has been a great supporter and he's helped us with a lot of information um, I've also worked in the past with Art Bowden, and I believe Art's on the call tonight. Um, and I would like to thank the Board of Selectmen and Joe Powers for their support, and I would like to ask if the Board has any questions comments or concerns for me at this point. Uh, Joe, can you uh, uh, follow up on, I'm sure you've had discussions on process, you know, all the issues that surround this. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. So um, uh, Jeff and I have uh, talked on a regular basis. Uh, this started out when Jeff reached out to me um, uh, soon after I presented to the board back in November of 2020 about the disposition of the Bank Street uh, property, the 203 Bank Street, the former Harbor Master or former fire station, however you want to refer it. And uh, Jeff reached out and asked if there was a possibility to, to uh, reuse the property for a different use. So as we've discussed, I mentioned to Jeff that there are currently town meeting votes in place. And um, some of what he is suggesting would require um, secondary actions by the town, either through the board or through town meeting. Um, so we agreed that he would uh, put his presentation together and present to you all tonight to get some, uh, if you have questions or comments or uh, perhaps he has questions and comments that the board can answer as well. Thank you, Joe. Uh, 
look to the rest of the board. Uh, comments, I guess I'll start with you, Michael. Questions, comments? Thanks, Larry. Uh, great job, Jeff. And, and I know that you've been at this for a lot longer than um, since 2020 uh, when we talked about the disposition. I believe um, this idea, I think you had this idea years and years ago, didn't you? Michael, this, this has been going since you and I have known each other for 10, 15 years, pal. This has well, been going on for a long time, this idea of mine. Well, great, great job, Jeff. I, I appreciate it, and I appreciate the uh, level of communication and, and uh, the level of detail that you've supplied me, at least, on the fundraising efforts and, um, and what your plan is and how you're going to make it work. I guess uh, the, the uh, one question for the town administrator would be, uh, where are we at with the RFP process on Bank Street? I know that we had uh, talked about putting an RFP out to gauge interest. <clears throat> So the RFP was in preparation. I can tell you that as of today, uh, we received information through the engineering department uh, that may put a crimp on the RFP. Um, I truly don't know yet. That's relative to uh, condition of the property that came to light. Um, it, it has to do with a potential uh, additional wetland designation. And so it's something that I need to work with the town engineer and other parties to, to vet. I don't think it's gonna take a long time, but I truly don't know what impact, if any, that uh, information will have on the process. Okay, and, and I guess without speculating, this property is a, is a fairly large property and we, and we have talked, um, you know, CPC's got a request in right now from Howard's Conservation Trust for parking in the rear of this property for trails and, and also making ADA trails out there. So I know that that, has to be looked at, right? The town spending money on these trails and the, and the uh, bog mitigation. And, and I, I would say we have to provide some sort of parking. But if I'm correct, this property would be big enough because when we discussed this in pre-town meeting, um, it was at least said that three homes could be put on this property instead of the firehouse. Is that still what we're thinking, Joe, or is this new um, hitch going to subtract from that well i don't i don't um i truly don't know the effect of the the latest uh development uh if you pardon the phrase um and i and i know that there has been discussion before but the records that i've found um there were preliminary drawings re regarding uh development but nothing that was formally provided so i know that it has to be vetted internal if we want to go that route what i can say is that we know that it's a, um, a parcel altogether that's just over two acres and so what we're trying to figure out is the uh, fire station building itself is within a hundred foot buffer zone of a wetland. That's the existing wetland that we're aware of. And so that would impact if we were to demolish the building potentially. So now we're trying to find out what effect, if any, that other potential wetland would have if there's an additional buffer on that one. So we know there's two acres of, of land potentially in play, but we, we really don't know yet what this uh, wetland could do to the to uh, the proposal. It certainly won't do anything to um, stop the demolition of the building. However, in, in talking with Mr. Logan Torrey for the last few months, he, he has indicated that perhaps there might be a, a reuse of the building. And so for that reason, I wanted to have the presentation and discussion uh, tonight because before we tear the building down, um, didn't know if there was any desire to keep the building or if I should continue forward on the demolition itself. So absent, absent the uh, other interested people, Joe, uh, because I do know that there's been inquiries made at, at, at least on this board member's uh, behalf. There, there, there's been the fire association for, for, for uh, was one of them and they, they considered possibly redoing it, cutting off the wing of it and making the original firehouse similar to what we did with South Howard's Meeting House. And I, and I would say based on, on Jeff's proposal, um, I don't think that that would prohibit us from allowing something else to happen there. But I think before we tear down the building, we certainly should have do a little more due diligence on who may want that, that building. Um, absent a decision on this and, and direction that we're going to go, I think Jeff um, has, has put himself out there. I think he has a great plan. Uh, I think it's a great idea and it would be a great statement for the town of Harwich 
to jump in on this. Um, Michael, I, I have a question for you. Go ahead. It, if this plan was to go into place, does this increase with the disa putting the disabled adults in this um, unit? Does that increase the amount of affordable housing there is in town? Absolutely. Um, and okay. and then just just to further where I was going with that was. Um, we have a housing we have a housing trust and, and Don Howell is uh, the chairman of that housing trust. Some land was given to the housing housing trust at town meeting, and I, I think it would certainly be something that maybe the housing trust takes up, and and possibly we do it on uh, one of those pieces of land if if it's possible. I know the town town Howard owns a lot of land, so maybe we go back to uh, town meeting and and pick another piece of land. And I've always said that we should be doing something quite different with the Albro House next to Town Hall. And I, and I used to, uh, two years ago, propose veterans housing in there. And right now we have one office, one town office in there. Uh, and then I believe we rent some space to a private party. But it seems to me that we're paying an awful lot of expense for that building to have one person. So I would also advocate um, for the Albro House if we can't find another piece of land. But Jeff, uh, just so everybody's clear, I 100% support what you're doing. I'm not 100% sure on the Bank Street Firehouse right now, but I thank you for your presentation and I, and I look forward to more. Uh, thank you, Michael. Michael. Uh, Ed, do you have a uh, comment? Uh, Steve, our, uh, Ed may be muted. Yeah, great, great presentation, Jeff. Um, uh, it certainly is a need. Uh, I agree with Michael. And um, if there's a way either through this property or through other properties, I think it's something we should definitely consider. Uh, so uh, we want to stay in close touch with you with Joe as the, as the project develops. Thank, Thank you, you very Steve, much, Don. Uh, Don? Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mike, Michael's right and Jeff's right. I mean, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, Jeff and I were talking about this uh, nowhere near as long as Michael was, but about four or five years ago, I think it was. Uh, I commend his uh, uh, following his dream because this is something that's um, uh, an unmet need. Uh, every, I'll echo everything Michael said. I mean, there's a, there's a lot to unpack, and I'm not sure whether this particular property uh, is the be all and end all for that, but. Uh, it's a commendable goal and it's something we should be looking into doing. So uh, everything else Michael said, I uh, back up. And thanks Jeff for uh, coming. I agree. Thanks uh, Jeff, great good presentation. I think it's been inferred. There's uh, uh, some steps to go through. There's uh, some competition for that property that we'll have to sort out the process to make it happen. But it's certainly a, uh, we, we need to do something. You know, so there are other properties out there that could work better than uh, 203 Bank. There is, but I think we'll pursue this discussion. We'll see where, where it goes as well. Uh, Joe, any final thoughts? If uh, not, we'll move on. No, that was all I had. Um, you know, like I said, Jeff has been um, uh, very passionate about this and we uh, we meet regularly so um, I think I have um, plenty of information tonight to take my next steps. Uh, Jeff I know that you and I talked today and we will pick up the discussion again later if that's what you'd like to do. Before Absolutely. I uh, leave this before we leave this subject is there anyone else on the video conference that would like to uh, chime in? Thanks again Jeff. Thank you. Uh, moving next to the consent agenda. Uh, Michael, you want to take this? Yes, I move that we approve the Caleb, Chest, uh, Caleb Chase fund request in the amount of $1,000. Second. So any other discussion? If not, I'll take a vote. Don? Aye. Ed? Aye. Steve? 
Aye. Michael? Aye. And I'm an aye. So Mr. moving Chair, to uh, new business. Yep, Mr. Chair, I'm going to work down through these if, if, if uh, you'll allow me. Yes. Prior to, prior to that, I just want to ask the question that I've been asking um, before each one of these votes come up on uh, liquor licenses or entertainment. Are any of these subject to hearings or uh, anything that would, would warn us not voting for them tonight? So um, the only one that stands out is item number six, Ember Pizza. Um, there is a pending matter and um, I am hopeful to uh, finalize my um, report on that tomorrow and to work with the chair on the hearing coming before the board. Otherwise, I'm not aware of any other establishments having any prior issues uh, with uh, these or other licenses. And then the uh, follow-up question, I guess, would be then, is there, a, is, there a, um, is there any reason to vote this tonight or do we bring it back after you finalize that? It's, it's my understanding that the board um, could renew tonight uh, because you, um, you have a separate matter. Uh, you're the licensing authority on that other matter. You could take any action at that point in time. So if you did approve tonight, there would be no harm in the future, according to council. Uh, and if you held off, there would be no harm rendered because of a future action, a future okay. discussion on the hearing. And I guess, Joe, the only other question is, on these licenses, is there any changes to the hours requested for entertainment or these renewals from last year? Uh, it's my understanding that these were the requests, uh, these mirror requests from last year. Okay. Um, I think I'll read these individually and- uh, so Michael, may I ask, a, I'd like to ask one question. Sure. Um, because the hours look to be consistent, and that's good. My question is uh, the uh, amplification of the music. That's that's been a concern. Is is that something we need to consider as we move more to outside entertainment? Well, you want my opinion? <laughs> I want everyone's opinion. I'm throwing it out because as we, you know, we know from this past year when we moved more music outside, it caused uh, more difficulties. You now. Uh, so I'm just raising it. I, I, I personally, and, and I am the liaison to the Noise Containment Committee, um, they have some recommendations and, and they, are, they are at a standstill on uh, definition of audible, audible noise and the 150 foot mark. Um, and I look at this a little bit differently than the, than, than, uh, than the minority of the committee, I guess I would say, because it was, it was voted in the minority of the committee still hold strong that we need to better clarify audible audible noise and it can't be um, it can't be a lyrics test is, is basically what the minority of the committee is saying I, I do think that we owe uh, the public and, and the noise containment committee that spent you know uh, a year of their lives working on this um, some answers and we haven't voted an action plan yet. So when it came before the board, we talked about a much swifter action and, and uh, much swifter punishments. Um, so, it, you know, in voting these tonight, Larry, it, it would be at least my statement that this comes back uh, to the board and we discuss what that action plan is going to be. And prior to these businesses opening with their entertainment, they made very well aware of what our new policies and procedures are gonna be um, so that they can have some comfort that we're gonna act on it and we're gonna act fast on it. And I know COVID played a big part this year in, in not having hearings fast enough um, and us being very open to outdoor entertainment uh, because of COVID. We're gonna have COVID again this summer and I'm sure we're gonna be tasked with letting people operate outside more. So. Uh, there was a good portion of the public that wanted to see some changes, and we have not uh, discussed that, and we still need to discuss that. Yeah, we'll bring that back as soon as you, uh, your committee comes back with that. Then. Don, do you have any comment? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. One specific one, and, and I'm going to ask Michael for something uh, to be contained in his motion, but the Harwich Inn and Tavern, 
on the Sunday, was that, is that still the same in this request, the 12 a.m. Sunday and beginning at 1 p.m.? I'd have to do more research on that. I don't have it directly in front of me. Well, just in general, Mr. Chair, what I was hoping Michael would do in his motion is also include some language in there about and other such terms and conditions as have been previously associated with these licenses so that we don't lose anything. I see your points. That, that kind of goes back to Michael's, your suggestion that we can follow up on these discussions when we have the policy in place. So, right. Are you willing to, to uh, modify your motion, Michael? Yes, absolutely. Okay, with that, I'm gonna move that we approve Harwichian and Tavern 77 Route 28 weekday, 12 p.m. to 12 a.m. inside and 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. outside. Sunday, 1 p.m. to 12 a.m. inside with any other terms and conditions previously assigned. Second. Any other discussion? I'll take a roll call. I'll start with an aye. Michael? Aye. Don? Aye. Ed? Uh, <coughs> aye. Steve? Aye. This is vote. Okay, I move that we approve Jake Rooney's 119 Brooks Road weekday, 5 p.m. to 12 p.m. inside and 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. outside. Sunday, 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. inside uh, enter, entertainment license with any terms and conditions previously assigned. Second. If no discussion, I'll take a roll call. Ed? Aye. Steve? Aye. Michael? Aye. Don? Aye. And I'm an aye. Okay, I move that we approve the 2021 entertainment license for 400 East 1421 Orleans Road weekday, 5 p.m. to 12 a.m. inside with any other terms and conditions assigned. Second. Second. Uh, our goal is roll call again. Michael? Aye. I'm an aye. Don? Aye. Steve? Aye. Ed? Aye. Voted? Okay, I move that we approve the 2021 entertainment license for Cape Sea Grill, 31 C Street, weekday, 11 a.m. to 12 a.m. inside, with any previous conditions assigned. Second. Discussion? None. I'll uh, take a roll call. Michael? Aye. Don? Aye. Steve? Aye. Ed? Aye. And I'm aye. All right, I move that we approve the 2021 entertainment license for the Lanyard, 429 Main Street, weekdays, 12 p.m. to 12 a.m. inside, Sunday, 1 p.m. to 9 p.m. inside and outside, with any other previous conditions assigned. Second. No discussion. I'll take a roll call, Steve. Aye. Ed? Aye. Don? Aye. Michael? Aye. And I'm aye. Um, I'm going to look to another board member to make a positive motion on the next one. I, I, I struggle with this. It, it, um, we clearly can't do anything right in the, in the uh, applicant's eyes. And um, we've been waiting for hearings for quite some time. And as I read in the paper last week, we did that wrong again. I, um, I, I can't make a positive motion on this. Not at this time. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I may, to an earlier no. question, uh, you'll see in the memo from staff uh, what they're requesting this year, comparison to what they had last year, and uh, you'll see that the weekday is an expansion. Uh, they're looking to go from 6 p.m. Uh, um, uh, outside, excuse me, they had 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. outside. They're looking to go 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. outside. And Joe, you're, uh, you're scheduled a hearing now when? So the hearing has been completed. I'm finalizing the report with council. The only thing that's holding me up right now is making sure I secure notice to the, uh, to the uh, attorney uh, prior to setting the time um, with you, Mr. Chairman. 
Well, see, I, I'd be more comfortable delaying this until we uh, handle the hearing from yeah, our side. Yeah, I, I would agree, Larry. This is Steve Ward. If there's no positive motion, then uh, Joe, let's bring this back when we uh, after we've had a chance to assess the hearing results. So noted. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Next on the agenda is the old business. Joe, I'll turn this over to you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So this is the first time, if you will, that this uh, item comes up under old business in the manner in which you see it on the agenda. Uh, and the reason why there's no packet material is there's really uh, nothing of um, significant substance this evening. Uh, all I really have is just some updates for the board and the general public uh, with an expectation that we'll have uh, actual topics and materials provided uh, on your meeting on February 8th. Um, so my update at this point, Mr. Chairman and members of the board, is uh, we will have, um, and I'm probably saying the last name wrong, I apologize in advance, but um, uh, George Hufelder from the Mass Alternative Septic System Test Center will be on your agenda on uh, Monday, February 8th to discuss uh, innovative uh, alternatives, in other words, IA technology. Um, as some of you may already be aware, there was a presentation uh, on Thursday of last week, the 28th of January, um, to the Pleasant Bay Watershed Work Group, and that was by Ed Eigner and Brian Howes, and they're talking about uh, the updates on the nitrogen removal, uh, tracking and accounting on that. Um, I had a chance to sit in on the first hour and a half of that. Um, very in-depth, very technical, um, but even I could keep up. Uh, we don't have the presentation material yet, Mr. Chairman, but once we have that, I'll share that with the board and the general public. Um, as, um, as you and Selectman Howell may recall, the next meeting of the DHY Working Group is uh, set for this Friday at 9 a.m. for February 5th. Um, I have uh, reached out to Yarmouth. I updated that ta uh, the town of Yarmouth about the board's vote uh, relative to uh, where we're at with the DHY agreement and i um, reaching out to my counterpart and Dennis uh, later this week for the same purpose um, to, uh, to have those side conversations with them as well. And so, as I mentioned, this is the first time that we have the topic on the agenda in the manner you see. And uh, starting on the week of February 8th, we should have substantive matters coming before the board. Uh, Joe, if I can add to, to that, in addition to George, uh, Brian Dudley from uh, Mass DEP right. will join us on, on the uh, Eighth, which will give us, I hope, a good discussion on both IA performance and then IA uh, regulatory issues. We're scheduled to uh, start at uh, eight. Uh, Joe, to add further to that, I would ask uh, any of my fellow board members if they uh, specific questions, if you can email those in to help Brian and uh, George prepare. And anyone in the audience uh, watching, or we can Joe get that word out. Uh, can send that also to you, and uh, we'll pass those on so they have that coming into the meeting. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The only thing I didn't have, did you say that that discussion will be at 8 p.m.? Yes. Thank you. Don? Thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> I just want to say it in this forum because I think it's important. Uh, rather than saying it after the fact. I just, uh, just want to confirm the vote we took for DHY was to allow it to be placed on the warrant, but we did not in any way, shape or form endorse uh, uh, what was going on. So that when we report on Friday, I don't want to get in front of ourselves here. All, all we did was say that we're willing to put it on the warrant at the moment. Yeah. I, uh, I think and I hope that was clear, but that, uh, that should help. Okay, Joe, uh, any other comments? If... No, other than that, Mr. Chairman, I'd move right on to uh, my administrator's report. Okay. Um, Excuse me, Mr. Chair. Yeah. Could, uh, uh, Sandy? Sure, please. Yeah, you should have received my email. Um, just as a side note, on the link for the email for public comment, uh, the blue highlighted area includes the word uh, two to with a space and for anyone watching um, that's not the proper email if you actually type it out you have to leave that off when you click the link the link works properly I just wanted to mention that um, okay thank you and then uh, 
just as a, a thought on the DHY, it seems like we're not going to get into it too much. Um, but I've been thinking about it a lot uh, since our last meeting. And I, um, I wanted to phrase, the, phrase it as a question um, to, to conceptualize the, the, the whole scope of the project and in this way. If uh, CDM Smith or an engineer had come to you and uh, said, you know, phases two and three, um, we're going to sewer over 145 homes that will not improve the Bay, Pleasant Bay. Um, our cost estimates might be accurate, but they could be 30% higher. It could be 50% higher. It could be 60% higher. We're not quite sure. And we didn't really take land use um, seriously. We haven't really dug down into some of the alternatives. But please set that aside. Let's look at phase four, five, six, and seven, and we really should go ahead with those. I would ask, you know, hypothetically, you know, what would your response to be in, to an engineering firm uh, be? Um, and my point is, again, I, I'm just restating that I feel strongly that we need to take a close look at the foundation of the project because it does affect the other phases. If we didn't have confidence in the first uh, phase two and phase three, I think phase one was great, by the way, the Muddy Creek project, I, I'd like to say that. Um, but the other aspects of the, the early phases, you know, it, it does tie into the uh, kind of the future. Um, and so I just wanted to throw that out there as a hypothetical question, discussion. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Sandy. Uh, we'll move on then, uh, Joel, to your town administrator's report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, a few quick items. First, uh, it's that time of, of year, every other year, where we've received uh, notice from the um, Division of uh, State Ethics. So we have to do our conflict of interest um, law uh, information and receipts. So I will be working with staff. We have uh, information that we'll send out to the board tomorrow and um, that we'll be distributing to staff on both the um, receipt and the uh, online training program. Uh, secondly, um, I know uh, there was a question well, earlier today. That, well, before you leave yep. that subject, uh, that would be uh, that would be processed. So we can do the ethics uh, requirement online. And uh, correct. We, well, there's a form that has to be signed by the board, so we'll circulate that for signatures. And then separately, we'll get you the links on the online training uh, that ends in a certificate that has to be submitted um, for the record. Okay. So we'll work okay. with the board on that. And uh, you, you will have seen in your packet that uh, we received notice um, last week from uh, Cape Cod Commission um, about the DLTA, um, our District Local Technical Assistance Funds. Um, and um, when I got that last week, I set up a meeting with staff so I've got uh, community development, engineering, and other departments meeting with me tomorrow uh, to review that, to see what uh, opportunities we think we can take uh, relative to um, uh, the DLTA um, grant program for calendar year 22. And uh, that concludes my report, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. Thank you, Joe. Uh, we'll go then to selectman's reports. Uh, Steve, I'll start with you. Yeah, um, Larry or Joe, did uh, the other selectman got copies of the presentation that was given to um, uh, uh, the um, uh, uh, subcommittee on, it was really on elementary school pricing, but, um, or costs, uh, but there was also a presentation by the um, uh, school administration Scott and, and his assistant relative to what the budget looks like for the upcoming year and how the proposed uh, alternate assessment method might work. Did, was any of that material, Joe, sent around to all the selectmen? Um, it hasn't been yet. I'm working with Carol. We, there's a slight change in the assessment number. Uh, so we had that confirmed today, uh, but I will re be redistributing that. Uh, and uh, thank you for that because Mr. Chairman, 
I don't know if you want to announce the joint meeting that has been established uh, for both uh, Town of Harwich, Town of Chatham, and the Monomoy Regional School Committee, uh, based on what Selectman Ford was just referencing. Yeah, go ahead. I just saw that notice today. So yeah, uh, if I'm well, yep, sorry. No, no, go ahead, Joe. I'm sorry. No, no, thank you, Selectman Ford. So the material that Selectman Ford was referencing was um, uh, discussed at the uh, subgroup that's been working on uh, the Monomoy question of um, parity, as you heard Dr. Carpenter say earlier, uh, parity or equity in the elementary schools and also parity and equity as much as possible in the funding and the assessments. So the sub working group has established a, um, a meeting of the three uh, entities, meaning uh, this board of selectmen, the Chatham Select Board and the Monomoy Regional School Committee. And that has been set for Wednesday, February 10th at 6.30 p.m. So uh, more information will be coming out through the school committee, but we are looking to have the three bodies appear in that joint meeting on Wednesday, February 10th at 6.30. And that's really to get deeper into the question of uh, the alternative assessment that Selectman Ford just referenced, um, which is the, the current issue that's vexing uh, the district and quite frankly, us as well. Yeah, and, and the uh, Larry, and the sooner that we can get that around, I think it's, very important so that each of the selectmen have a chance to take a closer look. Um, I, I must say that even with the alternative assessment method, it doesn't come into effect uh, as quickly as we would like. And I'm sure that my colleagues on the board will have some comments relative to that. It is a good process and it is a good alternative, but it doesn't happen, I think, as fast as, it, as, as we would hope it would. Uh, the secondary thing is that the, um, the school, uh, the uh, school uh, budget, the, w the way they showed it to us uh, in this uh, presentation, shows the state has come through with uh, numbers that are going to create a pretty, uh, pretty significant bump uh, in the cost to the town of Powich, uh, especially if the alternative assessment doesn't go into effect until uh, the fall. Uh, so uh, I think this is something we're all going to be very keenly focused on, uh, and we should try to get a chance to uh, address it, um, you know, by reading through it ourselves prior to this meeting, uh, which I think would be very important. Agreed, and uh, I, Joe, go ahead. I uh, know just to, to follow on that, just as a reminder, um, I will be presenting, excuse me, I will be transmitting is really the better way to say it. Um, my comprehensive budget report as required uh, Monday evening on the, on the 8th, uh, which incorporates the, the, the money that uh, Selectman Ford just referenced. And so um, I, say, I say transmitting because that's me conveying it to you and then uh, we can have a deeper dive on it before you then um, make any changes or recommendations before it goes on to finance committee later in the month. Um, so much more significant information to be coming up uh, next week. Thanks, Joe. Thank you. Yeah, I think what Steve is, I think my concern, probably our concern is, I still, and this has been in the papers, so I, you know, regardless of what's come out yet, is that this, the uh, change in the assessment process, my mind is still a long-term solution, and what I, a lot of our discussion has to be on what is the short-term, in other words, what happens next year. So that, I think, we'll have to explore more. But thank you, Steve, for uh, participating in that. Uh, Ed? You bet. No, I'm fine. Uh, Don? I don't have anything, thank you. Michael? I'm good. Uh, as am I. So I guess we'll, I'm disappointed there's no snow here tonight, but uh, I guess we've, uh, we'll have to live without it. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> <There's>, <laughs> no, okay. I'll, I'll take a roll call, Michael. Aye. Don? Aye. Steve? Aye. Ed? Aye. And I'm an aye. Good night, folks. Have a good night, everybody.